So hi, hi everyone. Um, nice to be part of this uh, of this event. Uh, my name is Ralph George. I'm the CEO and co-founder of the DSD app. Um, I create the app. I integrate the, the workflows and the vision from Christian Coachman into um, technology and into technical solutions. We start this app two and a half years ago. And uh, since then, uh, that's not even um, an updated uh, map. Since then, I traveled around the world and we organized everywhere in the world uh, courses. And we engaged a huge community around the world in the new uh, smile design movement. The concept of, uh, of the DSD app and of the... Um, do you see my screen or it's somehow uh, blocked? You see the first, only the first uh, slide, right? Mm, let me try again. <clears throat> Okay, so, okay, now it's it's better. So this map is not even um, updated. It's not the latest um, map that I, that I have. Since then, I organized courses around the world. We had everywhere on every single continent, we had courses um, and we engaged a huge community into the new smile design movement by uh, showing and by presenting a new way to design smiles. The concept and the vision of, of the smile design app is we want you to have a structured workflow and to follow the structured workflow to involve the team, to teach the team how to um, follow the workflow and have a very, very clear and um, um, structured way to proceed through the from the planning to the smile design. So in the first step, what we do is we create a patient uh, we create a patient documentation. <clears throat> so voice is low. Let me see, I cannot do anything. Just um, Use the microphone. Uh, let me try something else. <clears throat> let me try something else. Uh, sound input. Okay. Can you hear me better now? So I changed the mic. So just let me let me know if it's good enough or loud enough. <clears throat> it's good. Okay, perfect. I just changed the mic. So what we do is we create first a patient documentation using the app of course you can take the pictures we have some very um, interesting uh, ways and technologies to take the pictures we need the frontal facial smile and frontal facial rested in the real frontal position so the app has um, technology to allow you to take the perfect frontal picture the facial analysis is analyzing the head position and as soon as the head is 90 degrees to the camera, you get the picture without clicking on any on any button so that we make sure we have the perfect frontal smile. Based on the uh, frontal facial smile, we create, as you can see here, we create um, an, a facial analysis and we have integrated the facial flow in the facial analysis. So we need to know how the face is uh, of the patient is uh, structured so that we can design the smile based on the facial analysis and create a harmony in the face. 
We don't want to create symmetric smiles. We don't want to create a fake, uh, fake harmony. We want to follow the facial flow and we want to create a smile that it's adjusted and created for the harmony of the patient. And I'm gonna explain more to this, um, to this uh, part. Then we have the 3D smile design also in the app. So you can create easily um, a mock-up, uh, models for um, uh, composite veneers, uh, mock-up shells. So it's very, very uh, easy to create this, this smile design and the technology can translate a 2D into a 3D smile design perfectly so that you can proceed with the mock-up and motivating the patient. I'm gonna show you everything step by step. But now let's go and discuss the facial flow as a start. Facial flow, uh, yes, the application doesn't, the application doesn't um, uh, update the screens. Okay, so I, I'm gonna um, um, I'm gonna uh, stop and and uh, start the screen um, whenever I see the screen is not updated. Okay, so the facial flow, the facial flow is a concept created by Christian Coachman, Bruno Pereira, Eduardo Mann, and Kyle Stanley. They had a study. And they ask patients, what is the most harmonic smile? And they showed pictures. Patients, of course, they selected the natural harmonic smiles. So nothing is uh, related to symmetry. And um, the study actually explained that we try to build or to plan new smiles based on straight lines in the face for decades. We try to apply mathematical rules to the face. We try to apply straight lines in the face and calculate the, the, the smile based on these lines. But then we have a symmetric smile forced in an asymmetric face. So instead of trying to force symmetry into a face, we should obtain harmony. Then there is more than that. The face actually doesn't have a midline. What we define a midline between the glabella, tip of the nose, philtrum and chin is actually a curve or the second third of the face can have a complete different angulation than the lower third. So we don't have a line, we have different angulations, we have a curve, we have different forms. Now, the problem is when we design a smile and we don't consider the less dominant and the dominant side, so the red side of the facial flow is dominant, the green side is less dominant. When we don't consider the facial flow of the face and we create a smile, Towards the red side, we create a tension, a visual tension in the face. Creating a visual tension in the face, it is a visual discomfort um, seeing a beautiful smile, but not adjusted to the actual face flow of the patient, the facial flow of the patient. So we can have a perfect, beautiful, symmetric face, and we create a smile design, but that's maybe one, two, three percent of our patients. Everyone has a facial flow. The nose is usually not perfect in the middle. The tip of the nose is usually to the side. Then we have the philtrum. Then we have the chin direction. So we have to align our smile towards the facial flow. And then we get a result that looks very natural and in harmony with the face. Here is a very good example what happens when the angulation of the smile is just one, two degrees in the wrong direction, right? 
So by creating crossing lines in the face, we create tension. To make it easy in the app, we integrated the facial flow. So we can analyze the face. We can analyze the face based on the facial proportions and analysis. We set the smile frame. We adjust the smile frame and create outlines for the correction. And then we finalize first the design the motivational design. There is an, a difference between a plan that we do like this and a smile design. Let me see where is the slide. OK, so. When we use only a picture for the smile simulation, we call this plan a motivational smile simulation. Why is that so? Because usually when you have a patient, the gingival margins are covered by the lip. So you cannot see where the gingival margins are. You need to guess how to place the smile frame and you guess so that you get a good result uh, for the smile simulation, right? Back in the days, you could use for a smile simulation and you can use also in the app, a smile simulation with a frontal facial smile and the retracted picture. But taking the retracted picture in the very same angulation as the frontal facial smile, and then superimposing these both pictures so that you see the gingival margins and design the outlines properly and then displayed on the uh, frontal facial smile, it's almost impossible. But we have the option to create this smile with an intraoral smile, intraoral scan. Intraoral scans superimposed over the full smile picture. And now when we set our smile frame, even if the lip covers the teeth, we can very precisely go and see the gingival margins and plan our smile much more accurate than only with a frontal facial smile. The characteristics of, of a smile are set by the smile frame. And the smile frame is the foundation of our smile design. So the smile frame set correctly shows us the um, gingival curve, the smile curve, it's the incisal curve, and the proportions of the new smile. So we use the red proportions. It means 100% width of the central, 70% of the lateral, and 50% of the canine. That's a red proportion. And we have also the ratio, the, the, the ratio between the height and the width of the smile. Setting the smile frame as accurate as possible, we get an automatic result that is very close to the final, to the final result. Gingival curve, smile curve, and proportions. Now, there is a study from NYU, and here is the paper. And of course, not only the paper, but here are also the, um, um, the researchers, right, from uh, uh, writing this paper. Uh, Stephen Chu, Dennis, uh, Dennis Tarnov, uh, Jocelyn, Ten and uh, Christian Steppert. And they studied the papilla curve. The papilla curve is an area between 50% of the width of the height and 80% of the height. So your tip of the papilla needs to be inside this area. Then you get and you create a harmony of the new smile that is um, special.
Okay, let me see. Uh, there, there are some questions. Can I see the next slide now? What is this app called? You mean the DSD app? So it's the DSD app. I'm going to show you afterwards. I'm going to start, of course, uh, showing you cases so that you see uh, real time cases and how we how we design and how we um, how we plan everything step by step using all these uh, all these tools that are based on um, smile frame facial analysis and and uh, technology that allows you everything to plan faster and um, precise for for the um, for the lab so let me share my screen i think the best way is okay just a second Okay, so I think you, okay, perfect. So somehow it's not in real time, but I'm going to, I'm going to check now both uh, screens so that I make sure uh, you get everything, uh, what I explain. So let's go to menu and we are going to, <coughs> we're going to start some cases and um, okay I'm let me see if I have here the documentation okay I have my documentation so I have the pictures inside my patient documentation and I'm going to use these pictures and I'm going to use my intraoral scan I think yes intraoral scan to create a smile simulation and to create a 3D design so let me show you my picture. That's me before I repair my teeth. Uh, stress, grinding in the night, um, time. So it was time to get some veneers and to remake my smile. So I plan everything in the app as a motivational tool and I'm going to show you that's my final result. So we're, we increase the vertical dimension, veneers on top, um, ceramics on top, and at the bottom we have uh, composite veneers, flowable. I didn't have the time to do everything in one day, so I flew to Rio, to Angelo Rafael in Brazil, uh, we got the uppers done and then we um, we did the lowers. Two days, it was 16 hours procedure. Um, Sergio Saraiva was the, was the dentist. We planned everything uh, in the app. And let me show you how we did everything here. So first of all, I'm going to go and I'm going to motivate my patient with the smile simulation so i'm gonna select the documentation and i'm gonna create the smile simulation with a picture first just one picture facial analysis intrapupillar commissural line the, the app analyzes the face and rotates the face in the right, in the uh, optimal position for the smile simulation. With the arrows, I define now my dental midline. And I see glabella, I see tip of the nose. You can click on the, um, on the targets. And of course, you can uh, adjust if the picture was not analyzed properly. And let me see my, my facial flow. That's my facial flow. 
so I see my nose looks into the um, to the right side of my face and my chin and philtrum chin goes in the opposite direction if my facial flow would be like this right then i have a facial flow towards the right side so my design should be towards the right side otherwise we have the tension in the face let's uh, let's consider you know my um occlusal plane see you see it goes to towards the red side so it's a this it's a visual tension we don't we don't want a design like this okay so i'm gonna my picture is calibrated i set two reference lines for the centrals um distal of the centrals i measure with a digital caliper tip of the pupilla to the tip of the pupilla or distal to distal central incisors and i enter my value here to calibrate the real dimension of the app with the real dimension of the patient and here we go we need to set the smile frame smile frame i set the, the smile curve moving up and down the the smile frame the curve i define my gingival curve i adjust my proportion okay and i think my smile frame is good enough maybe to round so the gene the, um, the incisal curve what we call the smile curve follows the lower lip the gingival curve right now it's more or less guessed right because i cannot see where the gingival margins are i want to create just a motivational design the second design we're gonna use the um the STL, the intraoral scan, and then we can go much, much precise with our plan. Smile donator libraries. We have the Jan Haito libraries, and we have also DSD libraries inside the app. DSD libraries, we have smile donators. These smile donators, if you click on the name, you see the smile donator with the smile, Ricardo Brito, Christian Coachman, Kyle Stanley, Otavio, so now you can replicate these beautiful smiles to your patient. I'm gonna go with Ricardo Brito. As you can see, the smile frame already calculated the um, shapes in the face. What I need to do is to adjust the premolars and the molars. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna reflect. So I can mirror one side to the other side of the design so that I have the same teeth. I can put colors. These are not the final colors. It's just for me to analyze how this, the smile looks like. So I design canine a little bit wider and that's fine i guess i copy on the other side so i mirror the design and the size on the other side and here i go i adjust here my premolar molars the colors are not final i'm gonna adjust the colors to my picture because that's the biggest um, the biggest the final the final um adjustment and i go full screen and i analyze my smile in full screen because what we do is called facial driven smile design so i need to check with my full smile how my smile how my design look like looks like i check my outlines i see the problems i see i need to increase the vertical dimensions right I see that on one side, on the right side, screen side, or the left patient side, I see that the distal lines doesn't match 
actually with the real uh, with my planning that can be only one explanation when I, when we're gonna go and analyze my uh, occlusal view with the intraoral scan we're gonna see that the arch needs to be modified with ortho and needs to be brought buccal so in this case we see the proportions are on one side correct on the other side not correct that means we need to analyze the arch and the buccal corridor okay so i think it's fine i go to the next screen i um, adjust the lower lip line because this tool is going to put my smile in the mouth like this and here we go here is my smile i'm gonna let me see so we have here several options um need to mark the mouth the the lower lip line the um uh, the lower lip the lower line lip of the upper lip i think so yeah um first i see what i can do is i can activate my gingival layer and adjust here with this layer my design uh, my design so that i cover the old teeth on the incisal edge i do have the option to copy paste a black area for example and to cover the old teeth so that i can have a clean incisal edge this clean incisal edge is gonna create the beauty of my new smile and i'm gonna see very very uh, in a good way i'm i'm gonna see the the inside the ledges right now you can see how the inside the ledges are defined and i can analyze beautifully my inside the ledges if i like them if i don't like them so now you have a very um, visual communication with your patient and you can go into details and in the first i can bring some warmth to my design my picture is very very warm and here we go I'm going to finalize my design and I have my slider before and after. All right now we can see with the before and after slider how important it is to propose an aesthetic treatment. In the next screen, what I can do here is <clears throat> I can add some details because I have my measurement. So let's see what needs to be done 2.8 2.3 so now i can add more details and share with my lab because the app creates the documentation automatically i can make some drawings and that's the visual lab communication and my lab technician is, are, is gonna study and of course understand what's here my proposal for the treatment okay go next i see the documentation is created automatically during the design process so i have the picture smile frame outlines outlines with the face facial flow i have my design done final design original picture measurements and all this is uh, done automatically by the system and then i smile simulation smile simulation done and i can save the case the case is going to be saved in my cloud on my timeline so for a patient i have a timeline with all the projects that i uh, that i started and i can use uh, i can reopen projects i can redesign i can talk to my patient i can change the shapes and so on that was the motivational smile simulation okay so we have the simulation simple 
Now let's go and do another smile simulation, but now we're gonna take also the STL file. Having the STL file, we're gonna design much more precise we're going to see more details about gingival margins, about um, gingival curve, and we are going to have a much better and much more accurate first design for the patient. So let's go, and that's, that's interesting. Let's, um, in, the, in this first screen, what I need to do is to bring the, the, the intraoral scan in the frontal position, because every single intraoral scan, sometimes you get the the, the um, intraoral scan in a, in in the wrong position. So we bring to the frontal position, and then we calibrate the rotation point of the intraoral scan so that we can move and adjust the the intraoral scan from the center of the three D object. Every time we, do, we scan our patient, one of the most important things for the complete procedure is to calibrate the palatal, to, uh, to scan the palatal area. Why? Because having the palatal area in the scan is the only way how we can calibrate the occlusal view in a precise way. Otherwise, when we don't have these important, um, these important data here, I cannot calibrate the midline. So we are not going to calibrate the occlusal view in a good way. That's one important thing. The second important thing is, if we prep my feet, we are going to prep my feet and rescan again. The only way to calibrate the original scan and the prep is to use the palatal area. That's like a fingerprint. In all scans, this palatal area is going to stay the same. Now I don't have any references to calibrate the teeth because they are changed. But the palatal area is the same. So I'm going to exchange the original scan with the prep. And then I adjust my design to the prep. So let me, let me go, for example, and show you frontal. Okay, that's straight. Let me. Okay, occlusal profile. Oops, profile is not good. So I'm gonna bring my profile into the right position, and that's the perfect calibration for my occlusal view. The occlusal view is important because we are gonna um, define in the 3D, we're gonna define the occlusal curve when we design. And then we're going to place uh, the veneers or the 3D design based on the occlusal curve. So let me put the point. That's the, that's the um, rotation point of our, of our 3D model. So I'm going to I put the rotation point in the, in the middle of the object. And here we go. Let's design my smile using the intraoral scan picture the same procedure like in the first one, distal, incisal edge. I'm not going to enter my calibration anymore. And here we go. I have my intraoral scan. Now, I superimpose the intraoral scan with the picture. OK, oops. That requires a little bit of training, but I have a good and a bad. Mm, I had good and I have good and bad news for you. So good news is, we already developed for the iPad the technology to superimpose the STL and the um, picture with three points. So you're gonna put three points on the picture. Can I tip of the canine in uh, the point between uh, or tip of the pupilla between the, um, the papilla between the centrals and tip of the canine? And then you superimpose 
automatically uh, the intraoral scan with the, um, um, with the picture. Right now, we need to do it manually. It's a little bit of training, but it can be done. And now we have better details and references to create the smile frame and the new smile, right? So here we go. I have my new smile. I'm gonna keep my gingival margins for the centrals. I define my gingival uh, margins. I define my smile curve. And with these details, I'm gonna select the same library, um, Ricardo Brito. Here we go. And let me redesign my smile. I think that's good. Okay, too big. I, the canine is a little bit too big. I'm gonna bring the canine back into the uh, incisal position of the um, smile frame. Here we go. Rotation is okay. Premolar is okay. And let me mirror on the other side. Okay, that's good enough. So guys, if you have questions or ideas or feedback, please uh, write in the app or I'm, I'm not sure if you can um, uh, unmute your mics and uh, ask directly. So I'm going to I'm going to answer every single question. I'm going to discuss with you whatever uh, questions you have step by step. So please just ask. I'm go I go full smile uh, full screen right I need to see my face because when we design we design facial driven I need to see my face I need to see um, how everything looks like with the face so I'm gonna bring here a little bit okay so I correct my canted smile on one side okay so and then i finalize my design by marking the lip again the lip is gonna put the smile inside right inside the mouth so i don't have a gummy smile so the teeth are actually in the mouth and here we go with the control i have the same gummy smile uh, the gum layer and i copy paste the incisal edges so that I have a clean incisal edge and I can show my patient the picture and also the lab technician <clears throat> what I'm gonna do with the treatment, right? I can do the same measurements and I can share all these files with my lab technician and um, smile for lab. Okay, so that's the smile simulation with the infraoral scan. Much more precise. I know now much more about the situation of the patient. I saw the occlusal view of the patient. I know the occlusal view is, um, I analyzed the occlusal view. I know that on one side, I would need to bring the arch out to increase the, uh, to, to increase the buccal corridor, to have the arch more symmetric. Um, and I analyze and I, and I design based on more information now, my smile. And let's go to the interesting part. 3D smile design, mock-up, veneers, shells, whatever I need. Okay, so occlusion is very crucial. How can we transform or transfer Facebook uh, reading or occlusion digitally? Right now, what we do in the app is only aesthetics. So you can export the aesthetics as an open project and import 
the design in ExoCAD, tree shape, whatever you use. And then you can um, adjust function and finalize the design. What we do right now in the app is only aesthetics. It's chair side and in exchange uh, in communication with the patient. Right now, we cannot do everything in the app, but we are going to extend our features in the app. So we're going to have first lower design. And I work on some very, very um, uh, unique technologies for you to record the video interview of the patient. And we're going to simulate the jaw movements in the app based on the video interview. So we're going to have, uh, you don't need um, different devices and uh, stuff just to, uh, to have the real um yeah the real movement of the patient and then to check the occlusion so we are gonna um, right now just design just aesthetics okay so let's go and do some 3d smile design frontal view of the intraoral scan next screen um i don't know if you can use the app without training i know um we have tutorials in the app we have everything in the app and um, i'm gonna tell you at the end of the and the end of the presentation you can install the app from app store you can create an account for free, right? No credit card, no nothing, just registration. And you can use the app with all features for one month for free. In this month, we are going to send you invitation to different online programs that we have. And we're going to train you uh, smart simulation, smart simulation with intraoral scan uh, and so on. So you get the training included in the registration and you get always the training and um, uh, direct support with our support team included in the yearly subscription. So when you have, when you want to use the technology, you are not uh, let alone because our uh, vision of using the system is through our educational platform and with our support team that um, uh, goes with you step by step. You can do cases with them. You can uh, discuss cases. My whole team. My support team is, um, so we have uh, eight dentists in Miami and they provide support, smile design, and they work with everybody on own cases, right? And um, that's the service that we provide. Dentistry and how to use the principles with the app. No, Android, it's uh, not working on, a, on Android. It's only iOS. So, let me um, do the smile, 3D smile design. So now that's my occlusal view. I see the palatal area. I can, I can uh, calibrate properly. And now let's take a look at my arch, my occlusal curve. Now we see why the smile frame was not set properly, right? Because we have here issues. We have here issues. We should start with ortho. But I was the worst patient ever. No ortho, perfect smile now. So, okay. You know, you know very well what I'm talking about, right? When the patient comes into the office and say, I want the smile now. So let's uh, put the rotation point in the middle of the object. Okay. And here we go. Start facial analysis. midline it's at your side 
it is 8.21, right? 8.21, here in Miami is 3 p.m., 3.21. So let's let's see how fast I can get the mock-up for my patient and how fast I can change different mock-ups for my patient. Okay, so now I am going to superimpose the intra scan with my picture. Same way I did with the, um, with the smile simulation. Again, the update that we work on has the three points calibration. It's super easy, super fast, and really convenient. Put three points on the picture, put three points on the STL. Everything is calibrated. Also, we have an artificial intelligence uh, solution in place to that calibrates pictures and STL automatically. So you don't need to do anything. That's my vision to simplify and automate every single step that we can uh, simplify so that you just uh, focus on the patient, you just focus on the smile design and you don't need to do anything what we do right now manually because the, 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 um, the artificial intelligence modules and everything uh, calibrate and design for you automatically. So it's going to be super, super interesting this summer. Okay. We use now the time of isolation to do a lot of research, to um, train our models, to do a lot of education online and to work, of course, on the new on the new release. OK. That's good. Let me see. It's good. No, it's not. Let me see. That's better. OK. Now you say you have to consider also that the pictures are sometimes um, distorted. So if you take a picture with a, with a um, um, bad lens or camera, then you have a distortion in the picture. So you don't have the perfect calibration between the picture and the STL, the intra -oral scan. In this step, very important to check frontal position, occlusal position, and frontal and profile. That's fine. I set my midline and the incisal let me see the red lines needs to be precisely set okay they are okay <clears throat> In the occlusal view, super important, we're going to define now the occlusal curve. So how do I want to create my veneers? How do I want to create a new design? So I need to define the occlusal curve. And I'm going to follow exactly and precisely the new curve when I design my smiles. OK, so here we go. OK, and um, smile frame. Back to our smile frame, right? Smile frame. The smile frame is going to be the visual reference for 3D. That's the beauty of the system. We have the perfect translation between 2D and 3D. And I'm going to show you how. It's, um, it's very important and very easy. OK, that's good. Maybe like this. OK. Um, yeah. Smile Donator Library. So let me go with. I'm going to show you some. Uh, uh, let me think. I go with. Let's go with F8. Just for you to show you something that we have. And it's very, very interesting regarding 3D. So now I design my smile 
By the way, we have the smile frame and we have the smile curve. Now, if you're patients, you can ask feedback about the dominance of the smile. We have the centrals, we have the laterals, and we have the canines. Now, the canines and the laterals and the centrals, they lie on the, the, on the smile curve, right? It means my smile, as you can see, is monotonic. There is no dominance. If you like, if your patient likes a more dominant smile, you can go and reduce the size of the laterals and increase the size of the centrals. Then you have a more monotonic smile, uh, a dominant smile. So, but I'm going to go more like this. Or... yeah um and i'm gonna delete here the premolars and the molar because i want to create only the anteriors i think that's that's fine <clears throat> now because i didn't i didn't create a smile with all templates let's see if i can um, adjust the color so that it looks more or less like my my okay now i need to bring some warmth to my smile right but it's not it's not matching so i go and look for for a different structure i think it's gonna be hard to find the right color here so let me go back and undo my yes Let me check. I'm going to design also my um, uh, premolars. So I'm going to take in consideration. Um, let's go with Jacqueline. Okay, so if you click on the picture, you see the smile donator. Um, I used Ricardo Brito. Let's use Ricardo Brito also for the mock-up okay i'm nine minutes in the planning so i need to be here more frame it's fine i'm gonna reflect on the other side and here we go okay so that's my smile smile simulation i'm gonna follow very precisely my outlines that's the that's that's the idea of the of the design and the technology that we that we uh, develop so 2d is fine <clears throat> okay that's the 2d i'm not gonna adjust now the colors and delete and do all the stuff because i explained in the in the previous um in the previous um uh, project so now we have the 3d smile design in four screens very important because if I place my templates now and they are properly done in four screens, then the design is good. If I design only in the frontal view, the occlusal view is not going to match. Okay. So now let me show you 
I'm going to explain when I design. So I change the angulation for the whole group. And now I go to the frontal view. And what I do in the frontal view is I take the central, for example. I bring the central ex in the exact position as my temp as my outline. And I design like this. So I see in the frontal view, the position is not bad. Eventually a little bit one degree angulation. That's fine. I check my smile in the occlusal view. I can rotate just a little bit just to bring the central exactly on the um, on the curve and of course i need to follow my occlusal curve because that's the reference that's the visual reference that i use if this tooth is placed correctly here it is here placed correctly then everything is fine so i can the fourth view is the free view so i can go and just check like this you know to see if uh, if my central is placed correctly let's let's uh, design the lateral i'm gonna design in the four view because i like the four view um, i like when when uh, i design one tooth then in, in in this view and everything is fine then uh, i don't need to change anything else here we go it's designed it's in place let me check the angulation it's not bad let me see if i can correct here a little bit <clears throat> no i don't like the angulation that's better Good. Lateral and central done. <clears throat> Let me go to the canine. Where is my canine? Angulation. That's the most important thing. So also we work here on the um, on uh, automating more the um, the 3D smile design. So you're gonna be able to get a very very good starting point for 3d when you when you design uh, you don't need to move and to, to bring every single tooth in into the right position we're going to be able to um to have a good a very very good starting point okay so let's move the other central looks good oops and lingual now if i see red through my through my tooth it means i see my original design i see my original um i see my original tooth so here we go i have my centrals done lateral i see a question will dsd be partnering with align tech yes we have a strategic partnership with itero and with the line um so iteros are sold with the dsd app and uh we're gonna have more and more uh, common uh, so that's why also the um, direct connection from itero is actually you can scan with itero and send the scan directly to the dsd app and then you get the, the the scan directly here so it's very very convenient because you don't need to to check and to copy the scan to different uh, devices and and uh, dropbox and and so on <clears throat> okay so here we go that's my central but you know what i don't like the central very much so i'm gonna mm, mirror the the left central to the right side using here mirror tooth so i mirrored and now i have the same central i need to bring the central more 
um, incisal and here we go lateral Ta -da. lateral is good let me check yeah it's okay uh canine wrong angulation i just need to follow my outlines right if i follow my outlines everything is comes in place and now let's uh, design my premolars that's a little bit okay distal and here we go the other one oops too much palatal distal and apical let me see good and my molar here we go now let me see how everything looks like of course i can bring here a little bit more everything more adjusted this one oops let me see that's good you see i extend because the because of the arch right i had to So now the design is very, very uh, additive. Let's see. I'm going to change the opacity and see the premolars, they have the complete wrong angulation. So I'm going to turn off the model. I see better my design now. And I'm going to go and adjust, you know, um, uh, here, more precise. Here we go. That's the line. Too big no overlapping so i have different tools and different ways to um to design and to check my design right let's see what i'm gonna do with uh with the uh, right side okay um There we go. Okay. So I'm going to adjust the premolars here. Okay. So 20 minutes. Um, I have here my design done more or less so the 3d smile design was taking me 10 minutes and the smile simulation with 2d also um more or less 10 minutes with explanations 
now of course I can go and and really uh, design everything in, in 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 detail. Following of course my uh, my outlines because that's the idea, right? Here I have the outlines. I have um, my visual reference, so I need to follow the visual reference. If I design like this, I know I need to prep the teeth. Right? And um, I can create, in the first step, I can create a mock-up. Um, so let's put the smile in the mouth and go and analyze my design with the face, facial driven smile design. So now I see I have wrong angulation of my teeth. So here, that's so important to design right with the picture and in the face, because suddenly we see the relationship between the lip and the design. Seeing the relationship, shapes, okay. Seeing the relationship, we can adjust, we can make small adjustments and make sure that um, our design is good. Here, wrong angulation. Right, and the shapes, I check my design with the shapes if to see if I have the complete, the same angulation and everything. And here we go. This canine, for the mock-up, I'm gonna bring it more um i need to 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 design more additive right but um for the final for the final project we're gonna of course um prep the teeth we're gonna prep the teeth and uh create the veneers and design over the prep in the next screen we have we have solid objects. So yes, you can use every scanner. You can export the file on Dropbox or <clears throat> Dropbox or um, G Drive or iCloud, and then you can import it from the Dropbox into the app. The iTero has a direct connection. So if you have another scanner, just copy your file on the Dropbox and import it into the app. So that's the 2D, right, 2D. And I think I was designing, uh, considering the outlines. So now you can click on 3D. And then you see you have on one side 3D and you have on the other side the 2D. And now when you go, you can, you can uh, slide very, very, very uh, slow. And you can show your patient, listen, the incisal edges are the same. The position of the canines is the or laterals the same the canines so now you can show to your patient that the 2d 3d translation is pretty accurate and the patient gets actually the 3d exactly in the same way you designed 2d right but in the in the 3d design screen we have solid objects it means we resized and we adjusted the uh position rotation and and size of the solid object but it's not done yet the design is not done yet so we we need to create the mock-up and the mock-up needs to be created in a way uh, it looks beautiful right now we have in this screen we have some tools to adjust the design with brushes so i'm gonna for example i'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna add more material here to the gingival margins. I'm gonna smooth out the edges and smooth out the edges here. Let me brush more material in between. 
smooth out the edges, more intensity. And here we go, we create the mock-up. Or what you can do, you can move triangles. That's a very, very cool um, um, feature actually, because you can now click on the, on the tooth and look how I move the triangles and I adjust the triangles to the gingival margins. See? I adjust here everything to the gingival margins. So that my mock-up is, looks good. I can also take the brush and delete some stuff, what I don't need. So I delete and I adjust my gingival margins also for the mock-up. And let's smooth out the edges. Move. Okay. I do have a very, very additive design, um, design here. So let's see what we can do more uh, on the other side. On the other side, we're gonna also move a little bit here and adjust the position. Now I can move the triangles. Now I can finalize the design in the mock-up. I can check my angulation, the rotation. Let's see. This one, maybe more in. See, I, I brought the, the um, premolar in. Let me check the angulation. That's not bad, I think. Okay. Here we go. Centrals, it's fine. I can play with opacity and see the difference between my design and between the design and my actual teeth, right? And here we go, I think that's fine. So let me make sure that the centrals are the same length, yeah. Okay, so now let me, uh, where is my canine? So I'm gonna, add here more material and I'm gonna make sure that the canine is out and I'm gonna so we're gonna design the canine over the gums right just to have um just to have the um, the form of the canine done but now it's it doesn't look good actually I'm gonna move it back So if I delete the, the if I delete now the um, the gums, then my design is not motivational anymore because I cannot do the mock-up. So now what we call is an ideal design. So if I if I adjust the gums, I change from my design from the motivational to an ideal design, and uh, if I create the mock-up, I cannot touch the gums because I need the gums to be exactly the same as the patient situation. If I want to create the mock-up with Bisacryl, for example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, delete everything what you see in the bite. I'm gonna select the tooth and I'm gonna delete everything what you see in the bite because this material is gonna be the Bisacryl in the bite of the patient and they, they, they are not gonna be able to uh, close the mouth, right? So I'm going to delete everything in the occlusal view. I'm going to delete everything in the bite. So they're going to be able to see and feel the smile, but like veneers. Oops. So like this. So now I have like veneers, right? They can close the mouth and that's the mock-up that I can export. Or I, what I can do also is I can create shells. Also in the app, I click and I create shells. I can 3D print the shells afterwards. And um, I can do the shell veneers for my patient instead of a silicone key and, um, and um, basic real mock-up. 
So let's um, calculate the shells. That's a very, very intense um, calculation, mathematical calculation. So let's see. We upload the model to the cloud because uh, we create the shells in the cloud. As you can see, my internet today is not the best one. Even if I have one gigabit internet, that's a 20 MB file. It takes one minute. That's uh, now that everyone is home and everyone is uh, using the internet, it's a little bit more uh, complicated. So now we upload the design and then we get back the shells and we can 3D print the shells. We can create um, um, mock-up for our patients and so on. I'm going to show you the, the shells and then I'm going to uh, show you um, you can where you can uh, um, download the app if you want to try. You just create an account and you have the app for free one month. And I'm going to show you, um, we have in the app a lot of tutorials and we have also some uh, uh, cases that you can uh, that you can practice. So now we have our shells. This side is pretty good, but this side is has a hole in it, in the shells. That means one thing, the design on this side is too thin, right? It's too thin. So we need to go back. Uh, make the design more uh, buckle. We need more material so that the shells are not thin. When we print these shells, we're going to have a hole. So um, we need to go back, add more material, and then we can create the shells or we can um, we can um, bring our design back. So at the end, you can save this case you can reopen the case of course modify the case and um, uh, or you can export the stls send the stls to the lab and so on let me show you what you can do with the app um, i don't i don't want to save this uh, that's fine so in the menu, you have the try me option, try me. So if you click on try me, let me reset this, reset this case. You have five or four cases in 2D. So if you click, for example, on try me, you can design the smile with try me. You can use our patients and you can play around. If you click on DSD app training, you have a lot of videos in the app explaining every single step. Smile simulation, smile simulation with STL and so on. Documentation, smile simulation and so on. So you have a lot of material here uh, as tutorials. You have also in the 3D design, in the 3D try me, you have three cases that you can plan yourself and play around. The case three is a done case. So this case is already done. You can open the case and you can play with the uh, calibration, with the design, with 3D, with everything. All right, let me go through the process and then I'm gonna show you one more case. And um, do you have questions so far? No. Okay. So you can you can ask any time, and I'm gonna I'm gonna answer the questions. So here we go. We have shapes, 2D, and we have the 3D design. Like this. So you can go and see and play, change the design, put the design in the mouth. Um, redesign that's the 12 o'clock picture 12 o'clock picture is 
the idea is to define the wet dry border lip and to have the curve the beautiful curve from a different angulation and the most interesting here we, you have also the facial scan with the 3d design so you can um, adjust and compare now with the 3d smile design your 3d uh, your mock-up what is very important and unique feature we use the mix 3d mix 3d is something that nobody has and it allows you to create two three four mock-ups in one second once you design the case the design remains the same so you don't need to redesign again when you change your template for example you analyze the design with your patient and your patient says i'm not sure about the can i you select the canine and as you can see you can exchange the form of the canine and the design rotation size remains the same and you have just different uh, you have different templates only for the canine right oh i want f10 okay you get f10 or you say mm, the centrals i want the centrals back to f8 yes you get the centrals from F8. Okay, so let's go to the other canine and I want also F10. Sure, F10. How do you like it? Let's play with the laterals. Uh, okay, nice. M7, okay, M7. And here we go, you have a complete different design and a complete different mock-up in one second, right? You can export this one and print, that's it. And print another uh, another mock-up, that's the design. Based on this design, you can continue, um, of course, prep the teeth, you have the design, you adjust the design over the prep, then you create uh, uh, temps. The patient, you can analyze with the patient the design and, um, that's the way we use the smile design in the app in a very, very special and unique, I think, uh, way. So, what do you think? Oh, let me let me show you uh, where you can go and uh, you just go to App Store. OK, so you can go to App Store, search for DSD app. Apple, or let me, or um, the that's better. So let me share with you my screen. Another, another. Um, yeah, that's good. So you can go to our website, digitalsmiledesignapp.com, and you see the first option is download the app. So you need to go on the um, on the iPad, and. Uh, click on download app, you can install the app directly from the app store. You can create an account and then you get one month full functionality and you are gonna get emails with tutorials, invitation for live uh, events, webinars, everything for free. And then we, we teach you smile simulation, we teach you pictures, uh, patient documentation, 3D design, all the options that we have in the app facial flow and so on so that you can get the training also with um with the account okay so that's it thank you very much